Hey, welcome back. So now that E3 is done and we're getting into summer, we're going towards the second half of the year. Summer's in full swing and we got all sorts of games that are going to be coming out. We got a whole bunch of new release dates, a whole bunch of new games that we've seen from E3. So now it's time to start talking about what games we're looking at, what games we're looking forward, which ones are on the list, and pretty much how we're going to pay for it all. So if you're like me, you're pretty much broke at this point, so you can feel free to send me money if you want. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, click the thumbs up, let me know what you like about this channel in the comments below, and let's go ahead and get to the top list of games that I'm going to be looking forward to, and just the major releases that are coming up at the end of 2019 and going into next year. This is Poppy, say hi to him. He likes having money thrown at him. Please send money to throw at him. We're gonna make it rain up in this motherfucker. So the first game that we're talking about is Crash Team Racing. And yes, I have my original copy from the PS1. I got this for the Christmas of 1999 and that was just like three months after it came out. It's one of my favorites. Played it a whole bunch back in the day. I love the multiplayer. And now here we are. They've pretty much remade it. They've taken both of their Crash Bandicoot racing games. They've completely redone them. They've redone everything. They've gone through with the levels. They've basically taken the levels that don't have any type of actual solid branding. And they've taken the best of that and pretty much just melded it with the bosses to give each level its actual own theme. There's over 30 levels. This game seems like it's going to be great. I was going to be doing this video just like the other day and so actually today the game came out and there's been a little bit of criticism towards it from everything to the online with players sort of just warping all over the map people are also complaining about the single player campaign and the difficulty on that also the difficulties with drifting and jumping and just trying to win and everyone's saying that the AI is cheap and rubber banding and all sorts of stuff like that so People like Wood and RGT85, you know, they just can't hack it. I was going to buy this game, and I'm probably still going to in the next couple days, so maybe look forward to a review on that on the channel. So that's the first game that we're looking at today. But overall, this game looks great. I mean, they really took the time here. They've been working on it for a few years. They've taken all the tracks, redone everything. They've gone through all the audio, all the voice lines, all the music. They've... They've even resurrected some of the characters and made them look better, gave them new costumes, gave them separate skins even, so, you know, for the price of $39.99, it's a pretty good game, and then there's also the Deluxe Edition for $59.99, and that comes with some of the extra skins and stuff, but this game is just completely packed, full of content, so I'm curious to see how the online plays out, if they actually patch it, and how the game is going to be, so you might want to keep your eye on that. So the next game that you should be looking forward to and buying, it comes out next Tuesday, made by one of the greats, Koji Igarashi. It's developed by Artplay, Deco, and WayForward Technology, published by 505 Games, and that is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I can't wait for this game. I'm waiting for it on the Nintendo Switch. It's already out for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The reviews are out. The word is out. This game is amazing. It's a classic return to form for what Castlevania is. And this is just a great thing to see because it's so sad that Konami just sits on the Castlevania IP. They were dumb enough to say to Koji Igarashi's face several years back that 
people didn't want 2D games and that this Metroidvania type of thing wasn't going to work in 2D and that's not what people wanted. It needed to be 3D. So Koji Igarashi, you know, he left Konami and he just spread his wings and just pulled out the sword and he pretty much just wiped the floor with all of us. That's why it's called Bloodstained. Like he went, he started the Kickstarter, it got delayed. It's been four plus years now. People were understanding, people backed it. It didn't look too great at first, but then they finally came out with a second trailer that compared what they had done to what they've previously done. And it just looks so much better. So I can't wait for this game. If you guys don't have your eye on it, you definitely need to be go getting it. That one is coming out just in a couple days. So look forward to that. That's the first game on the list that you should probably actually be buying. Next up on the list is Virtua Racing. This is a game that I haven't played in probably 20 years. My brother had it and he still has it on the 32X for the Sega Genesis, which when he moved out, he basically took that with him. And he was the one that saved up and paid $200 for the 32X. I remember seeing that thing back in the day and not knowing what it was. And it just seemed like such a weird mess having to put the little brackets in for RF signals and you didn't really need them, but the thing would get fuzzy and it really didn't work that well and he only ever ended up with two games for it and virtual racing was one of them so i haven't played this game since probably 1997 and it is coming out on the nintendo switch on june 27th and that's pretty much in a week from now the game is 7.99 and it's just great to see it's been months that we've been waiting it's been released in japan and it hasn't been brought in over yet and at this point i've just pretty much been waiting for it to come over i was actually going to buy some japanese eShop credit and just go buy it on the eShop over from Japan, but I knew that it would be coming sooner or later. They didn't really give it much of an announcement. It's just in the coming soon tab on the Nintendo Switch eShop, so that's going to be coming at $7.99, and it comes out in less than a week. It's a nostalgia trip, definitely worth getting behind the wheel on. Also pairing with that is Monster Boy in Wonderland. This is another game that's from Sega, and it comes out along with Virtua Racing on June 27th and it's, it's definitely great to go back and revisit these old games especially now with the revival of things like Monster Boy and these types of styles of games actually coming back into the limelight so it's definitely just one more great game to add to the list of many many dozens so get your money ready that one if you're broke from everything already and pre-orders and putting money down it all, it's only $7.99 so you can pretty much buy a Happy Meal or buy Wonder Boy or buy Virtua Racing. Mario Maker 2, that's the next one that's coming out, and that's in less than a week. RIP to Mario Maker 1. I've seen a few streams today, and I think people thought that it was Mario Maker 2 or like an early look at it, and people were just piling in. All their streams were RIP Mario Maker 1. This is going to be my last Mario Maker 1 stream. So it was great to see the community rally as we all say rest in peace to Mario Maker 1. I did see a video from I think Game Explain. It showed a bunch of experiments, like 20 different ones of things that you can and can't do in the game. So there are limitations to things. There's kind of some things that it looks like that they could tweak, but we're in the later days of getting patches and Nintendo actually putting in the extra work. So hopefully as this game goes along, we see new mechanics, we see new things coming. We see fans reach out and pretty much tell them, hey, we should have had this, can you add this? And Maybe they'll add in some stuff to it that we wouldn't even think about beforehand. So that's out next week. It's $59.99. You better go and get it or you're going to have to meet your maker. Mario! Next one up is Red Faction Gorilla, the Remastered Edition. And this is just going to be a cool game. I still have Red Faction Gorilla for the Xbox 360 and it was a pretty good game. I might actually be checking it out again. I definitely love Red Faction. I would like to see a new one. When I first bought the original Red Faction on PlayStation 2, I bought it like two days after it came out. And I was just blown away by things like the destructible environments. There hasn't been a game that has really done it that good since. And the multiplayer was great because you could also play with bots. So this game has a little bit of that. It's got the crazy destructible environments and it's overall just going to be a good time. It's cool that they've brought it back. THQ Nordic, they've gone ahead and remastered it. So that one's out on July 2nd. Go ahead and pick that one up or check it out if you're new to the franchise. It's going to be probably a good time, so I definitely would recommend it. New to the franchise, it's worth giving a shot or just maybe looking at some videos and seeing if it's something for you. And then we have on July 12th, we finally, 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 it's been out for two and a half years over in Japan, and that is Dragon Quest Builders 2. So that came out originally in Japan. 
as a double pack. Dragon Quest Builders 1 and Dragon Quest Builders 2. And we've just patiently been awaiting for it over here in the West. And so on July 12th, it's actually coming over. It's going to be a physical edition as well as digital. It's going to be a good time. I played the demo for the first one. And then several months ago, I was going to get into the first one and actually buy it. But I knew at some point we'd be seeing the second one. And I knew by the time that that came out, there was just going to be so many new things to it. So if you're any fan of RPGs or building, like me, myself, I'm not really into the Minecraft thing. And you don't have to be to enjoy this game. It's just a fun RPG with a building mechanic. And you go on quests and stuff. You build up your town. You build up your friendship and your allies in your group. And it's just a good RPG. Good classic fun for the whole family. It's $59.99 and that comes out on July 12th. So I would highly recommend it. Let me know if you're picking that one up down in the comments below. And then we finally also have Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order. And that comes out on July 19th. When I saw it in the Nintendo Direct several months back, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was just completely shocked because the game hasn't been around. Like, number two was 10 or 11 years ago or 9 years ago. I don't quite... Anyways, that was a long-ass time ago, so it was really awesome to see that Nintendo revive this franchise. It makes you wonder in the future what else they're going to be reviving. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to buy this day one. It's not really my type of gameplay, but I, I did play the first one a lot and I really liked it. So maybe I'll check this one out at some point. But if you're into any of the Marvel Universe and you like these characters, it's just a good arcadey type of experience that has many, many hours, many ways to play it, many missions many numbers of people that you can have in your group. You can swap through different characters and just be whoever you want to be and just kind of play the game however you want. So it's really awesome to see. I'm really curious if Nintendo can bring back any of these other dead franchises from other companies and throw them a little bit of money and help them publish it and put it out there. So Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order comes out on July 19th. July 26th, we have Wolfenstein Youngblood coming out. And this game's got a little bit of controversy going on from the physical edition just having a piece of paper, essentially, inside the case, which makes it pointless to just go buy an empty case. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but I would feel very stupid going and getting somebody to either pull it out of a little plastic case or go into the shelf or the glass case, pull out a game that I buy, and then on the ride home or finally get home and open up the case just to get this code, this piece of paper that's in it, out from the inside of the box. Like, that won't be me. So I think I'm just gonna be buying this game digital, but I'm wondering if after it sells a crazy amount, if we'll see in the next year, it finally come out on a physical cart. I think that's gonna be the case. Anyways, this game is coming out on July 26th. So let me know if you're gonna pick up the game. I encourage you to buy the game. Next on the list is Astral Chain. This comes out on August 30th, which is a great time for it to come out, right when it's still nice and hot. It's almost September. School's just starting. It's a great time to just get back into some kind of game, and especially Astral Chain. It looks like it's going to have hours of things to do. It's definitely like a great mending of this action adventure style, and it's from Platinum Games, so it's more than likely going to be a good game. Me, I'm kind of not really looking at any gameplay. I watched a little bit of stuff for me 3 but I'm just not really interested in looking at it. It's just the kind of game that when it comes out, I want to buy it and actually play it. I don't really have much to say about this game other than just this footage here that you're looking at. It looks dope as hell, and it's just a game that I just want to get my hands on and play it for myself. I don't really want any more details. I don't need any more trailers. The game just needs to come out and it looks really good, so I'm going to be checking that out. And so that comes out on August 30th. The next game that is coming out sometime in this fall is Oninaki, and it's by Tokyo RPG Factory. They're the like, subsidiary of Square Enix, and they're the ones that did Lost Fear and I Am Setsuna. So if you like those games, this game looks sort of similar to that style. It looks like it's a little bit more refined. From the initial trailer, I did think it looked good. And then from the stuff that we saw at E3, the additional gameplay and extra trailer that we saw, I actually thought that it sort of looked worse than what the initial reveal was in the trailer from several months ago. 
So I don't know. I think this game will be decent. I think it's going to be $29.99. Don't quote me on that. It might be $39.99. Be on the lookout for that. I know I'm going to be, and I'm going to be trying it out or curious to see how it comes out and what people's thoughts are on it. So if you're looking forward to that, let me know. The next two games are going to be my birthday present to myself. Yay, me! Yeah! Which I can't wait for because it's at the perfect time of year, right around my birthday. It's starting to get cold out. This is at the end of September. And the first game is Zelda Link's Awakening. So when this was first released, everybody said they didn't like the art style. That whole thing seems to have died down. We've seen plenty of footage from the treehouse. And this game just looks amazing. We saw at E3, we saw the little dioramas that they made of them on the show floor in the Nintendo booth. And those just looked awesome. There's also the Link from Link's Awakening Amiibo coming out. And I'm just completely pumped for that. It looks so cool. I can't wait to get it. And that's going to be on the week of my birthday. So I'm epically stoked beyond all of Koho Link for it. So I'm definitely going to get all the instruments. And I'm going to climb up that little summit. And I'm going to get on top of the egg with my fiddle. And I'm just gonna take that game out in one sitting. I know you guys are already pumped for it. You don't even need to tell me. So look forward to Link's Awakening. That comes out on September 20th. And two of the next games that also come before that second game that I was talking about, totaling to four games, right? Two plus two is four. So initially I said these next two games, then I talked about one, and now I'm talking about two more games that are in between those two. So there's four games coming out in one week. You can see how this is stacking up. You can see where the money's disappearing to. Nintendo's going to owe me money back. I want a rebate. So September 24th is Contra Hardcore. This game doesn't look like Contra. It's got a big panda bear, and it looks a little bit weird, but I'm open to trying it out. It's I don't think it's really going to grab me, but maybe some of you guys are pumped for it. I don't really have too much more to say other than that. I mean, it looks like it's going to be all right. I think it'll just be... Uh, okay, decent, pretty good kind of game. We'll have to see more on the gameplay and what the bosses are like, but from so far what I've seen, it's not classic Contra, and it doesn't really have too many odes to classic Contra. I'm not quite sure what they were thinking, but if you're excited for it, then I'm very happy for you, and hey, it comes out on September 24th, so if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. So now the game, at the end of the two games that I was talking about inside of two games with for a total of four. Oh, so before I talk about the two games that with the one subtracted with the two in the middle, there's actually one more. So the next one in that list of four is Dragon Quest XI S for the Nintendo Switch Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition for Nintendo Switch. Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch. It's looking epic. I'm really happy that they brought it to the Switch. It was one of the first games announced for the Switch, and we knew that it was coming. It was just a matter of time. So here we are two plus years later. It's nice to see that it has additional content to the PS4 version. So I just can't wait to play this game. It's got that cool 8-bit mode. They've redone music. They've done it in the 8-bit mode as well. And it just overall looks like a fun game. It's definitely just beautiful. Big, vast, open worlds. Super huge cathedrals and... Everything in the towns just look amazing. You can ride a horse. You can get up on the buildings and stuff. Build up your party. You know, a slime draws an ear on September 27th in Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition for Nintendo Switch. So go get it. And after that, I'm not sure what's coming out for October. I saw on the news section of the Nintendo Switch there was a little article you know, you go through and there's the articles and it was from Nintendo and it showed not the one that they had on Twitter of the little banner with all the games coming out after E3. This was like a post that E3 post, post, post. And it basically showed all the quarters. It showed quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And so under Link's Awakening and all the games for September, it had Luigi's Mansion. So I'm pretty sure that's when that game is going to be. So I'm putting Luigi's Mansion into that list. The game looks really good. It looks really smooth. It sort of does has this 
kind of dumbed down feel that all the Mario World games are sort of getting now. And the game does look good, don't get me wrong, but it kind of isn't the original. It's definitely more bright. The camera's in a different angle. The ceilings are way higher. So I do like that. I like the atmosphere. I'm open to this game. I'm definitely going to get it and I'm going to try it out. And hopefully it gets, hopefully it doesn't get mixed reviews and it gets, you know, fair to good reviews, maybe even some excellent reviews. But based on the gameplay and all the treehouse stuff we've seen, I tried not to spoil it too much for myself because they kind of did show a lot. And and just in terms of the environment, it really looks great. The lighting is just a little bit too bright, but everything has a nice coat to it. Everything's nice and shined. All the walls and all the things that are, you know, old school and Halloween-y that should be like that are like that. There's a cool scene where Luigi's going past a mirror and so on the opposite side of the hallway is a window. So in that mirror that you see him walking by, you see the you see the outside, you see the window and you see Luigi walking by it. So they've definitely spent their time. They sp so they've definitely spent a fair share of time and money on this game. So I'm just curious to play it when it comes out and you know, I guess we'll have to see, but that should be in October. And then we're jumping to November 15th with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Which team are you? Are you going with the sword? Or are you going with the shield? I know everyone's decision is just basically based on the dog with the sword in its mouth versus the dog with the cool shield. They both look cool. I'm not sure which version I'm going to pick up. I'm thinking it's going to be sword kind of just because of the cool dog with the sword in its mouth. But we're going to have to see what Pokemon are actually missing from each. So that comes out on November 15th, hopefully with the Nintendo Switch Mini. I do have inside sources, you know, so yeah. But we all have our inside sources. We all know a Nintendo Switch Mini is coming out. The Joy-Cons are going to be attached to it and it's going to dock. Like that's just what it is. If you think different, let me know in the comments below and you can yell at me about it down there. So who are you starting with? Are you going with the awesome Grookey? Are you going with Sobble? Or are you going with Score Bunny? I'm not even going to tell you. I just want to know below who you're picking and why. Next game for November is Mario and Sonic at the 2020 Olympics. Japan somewhere. I forget where they're actually held, but I think that's in the title. But this game, I didn't really care about it at first. And in the direct, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. But... Then Nintendo did it. They gave us shirtless Robotnik and Yoshi doing a 900 on a skateboard. So enough said, go and get it in November. That's Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games in November. Check it out. So that's pretty much it. I just have a small other list of a couple indie games that are going to be coming out or getting physical editions. And they've kind of been talked about in between all these bigger games, but they've gotten a little bit lost in the shuffle. And those are games like Rad, which that game looks pretty cool. We only saw a trailer. We haven't really seen much on it, but it does look like it could be good. There's also Killer Queen Black. There's also the Shovel Knight physical collection, the Treasure Trove, that has been... That has been on its way to the Nintendo Switch for months and months and months. They ran into some kind of difficulty with it and they pushed it back. So that should be coming sometime soon. I'm guessing in an August Direct. Ding! That's right. I'm predicting an August Direct. It's going to be like August 17th or in inside of that week. But that's when I'm predicting the Direct. And that's when I think we're going to hear the announcement for the physical version with the House of Cards for the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove actual physical edition. And then the other game is Untitled Goose Game. That one is the same. It got pushed back. We don't know when it's coming out. Hoping to hear more. And then the last game that I'm putting on the list for now, just because it's just because this is my list until the end of the year. I didn't want to overload it and start going into 2020. That's way too far away. Can't even think about it. And there's many other games that I didn't even put on here because there's just too many. I didn't want to overwhelm and like give everybody an anxiety attack. When I first saw all these games, I was kind of having anxiety thinking I'm going to have to go and work like 18 hours a day for like the next like six months until 
2020 opens up and then it starts slowing down. But I think, I think the beginning of 2020 is actually going to be ramped up again and then it's going to slow down. And then by the time E3 next year, it's just going to ramp up and it's going to do the same thing year after year after year. So you better get a savings account now and you better start saving up your money because Nintendo is coming for it. So guys, that is just a video on the top games. I'm not even sure how many were in the list. I didn't actually count. I just sort of wrote them down and here's the video for you. Again, let me know about the intro if you liked it. Let me know the presentation style. Just kind of doing something different. If you like anything of it and you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in another video and this is D-Dub out. Have a good day. The, the door's actually right over here. I don't know why I walked out that way. D-Dub, 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 D-Dub.